Poker blockers, one of the most misunderstood concepts in the entire game. Players talk about blockers like they're magic, like holding one card suddenly shuts down entire ranges. But most of what you hear at the table is wrong. Today, we are going to discuss what blockers actually do and what they absolutely do not do. Blockers are one of those concepts players love to talk about, but very few truly understand. The problem starts with the term itself, blocker. It sounds like you're blocking something from happening, when in reality, that's almost never the case. Most blockers don't eliminate hands. They simply reduce probability. And if you don't know the difference, you end up bluffing in the wrong spots, folding at the wrong time, and misreading ranges all night long. Hi, I'm Terry Wood, and in this video, we are going to break down what a poker blocker actually is, the two types of blockers we must understand, the math behind them, when blockers matter, when they're worthless, and why solvers absolutely love them. But live poker doesn't. Let's start with the real definition. A poker blocker is simply a card you hold that reduces the likelihood your opponent can have certain combinations. That's it. Nothing mystical. Nothing automatic. It just lowers the probability of specific hands being out there. Now here's where most players make the mistake. They hear the word blocker and think that card eliminates the hand entirely. It doesn't. Most blockers are probabilistic, not absolute. They change the math slightly, but they don't delete hands from anyone's range. Only in very rare cases does a blocker actually remove a hand completely. Those cases exist, and we'll talk about them. But almost everything you hear about blockers, especially preflop, is based on the false idea that holding one card somehow shuts down an entire part of the deck. To really understand blockers, you need to separate them into two categories. And this is the distinction almost nobody makes, which is why blockers get misused so often. There are only two types. Number one, absolute blockers. These are rare. An absolute blocker removes a specific combination entirely, meaning that hand cannot exist anywhere at the table. These show up post-flop when the board creates a precise requirement for the nuts, and you hold the exact card that makes that hand impossible for anyone else. For example, if the board comes nine of spades, seven of spades, and the two of spades, and you're holding the ace of spades and the jack of hearts, the nut flush is literally impossible for any opponent. Nobody can have it. That's a true absolute blocker. It eliminates, not reduces, the strongest hand. Absolute blockers give you certainty. They take the very top of your opponent's range and erase it completely. Number two, probabilistic blockers. And this is where most blockers fall. Probabilistic blockers simply make a hand less likely, but they don't remove it. Holding an ace doesn't block another player from also having an ace preflop. It just reduces the number available from four to three. And in a foreign game, that reduction doesn't carry the weight players think it does. For example, on a board like the Ace of Diamonds, King of Clubs, and the Nine of Hearts, if you're holding the Ace of Spades and the Queen of Diamonds, you are not blocking another ace. Opponents can still easily have Ace King, Ace Nine, or even Pocket Aces. All you've done is reduce the chances slightly. You didn't eliminate those combos. So the distinction is simple. Absolute blockers remove. Probabilistic blockers reduce. Confusing those two can lead to bluff timing issues, incorrect folds and reads that just don't match the math. Before we go any further, we need to talk about the math behind preflop blockers, because this is where most of the confusion starts. And it's simple once you see the numbers. In a nine-handed game, 18 cards are dealt out preflop. That means 34.6% of the entire deck is already gone before you act. And because distribution is random on average, about 1.38 cards of every rank are already out there, aces included. And here's the part most players never consider. If you were dealt an ace in a nine-handed game, the probability that another player was also dealt an ace is roughly 62% or any other specific card rank. In other words, more than half the time, someone else will also have the card you think you're blocking. This is why statements like, I block pocket aces, or I block ace king preflop are mathematically misleading. You don't. Someone can still absolutely have another ace, and about 62% of the time, they do. The idea that one card dramatically shifts preflop ranges simply doesn't hold up once you understand the actual distribution. Let's take a minute to talk about why blockers seem so powerful in solver outputs, and why that rarely translates to the real world of live poker. Solvers operate in a universe where everything is perfect. Ranges are balanced. Players fold at the exact frequency the model expects. Every action is taken with mathematical precision. And every player understands what their range is supposed to look like. In that world, 
even a small probabilistic blocker, like holding one ten or one ace, can have a measurable impact. The solver knows how many combinations exist, how many remain, and how often each player should defend or fold. So a tiny probability shift actually changes the equilibrium. But real poker isn't an equilibrium. People don't play perfect ranges. They don't fold the way solvers expect. They overcall, underbluff, chase hands, tilt, and make decisions based on emotion, curiosity, ego, and the moment. And because of that, the tiny effects solvers rely on simply don't exist in live games. A blocker that matters in theory gets swallowed up by the chaos of real human behavior. A solver might bluff because you remove two value combos, but the live player calls because top pair is top pair, or because they don't believe you, or because they're stuck $600. This is why blockers feel powerful when you study charts, but almost irrelevant at a real table. Solvers assume perfection. Live poker is the opposite. Blockers have theoretical value, sure, but in real games, that value gets drowned out by everything solvers can't model. At the end of the day, blockers are exactly what we've been saying from the start. They're tools, not rules. And in real poker, especially live cash games, they are supporting information, not primary. Absolute blockers matter. Probabilistic blockers mostly don't. Solvers can build entire strategies around tiny blocker effects because they're operating in a world of perfect information and perfect responses. But in live poker, the value of a blocker is almost always overshadowed by something far more important, the player, their tendencies, their emotions, their calling frequency, their history with you, their perception of the hand. Blockers don't make opponents fold. Blockers don't justify bluffs. Blockers don't override wide, loose, unpredictable ranges. What they do is help you refine decisions in the rare situations where ranges are tight, the pot is heads up, the board is polarized, and the opponent is capable of folding correctly. They sharpen the picture, but they don't paint it. If you want the full, in-depth version of everything we covered today, the complete written article is available on PokerRailbird.com. I have placed the link in the description below and in the pinned comments. If you think this video has value, please take a moment to like, share, and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. I'm Terry Wood from PokerRailbird.com, and we'll see you at the tables.